All right, welcome back, guys. So we've done uh, basically all of the HTML that we really need to focus on now. There's a few other elements, and we'll get to that later on. But right now, we're going to jump into styling the website. So as you recall, most likely in my first video, in the intro video I did for this course, I explained how there's generally three parts of a website. You've got the HTML, which uh, defines the elements that are on the page. And then you've got CSS, which defines how those elements look. And then you've got JavaScript, which defines what those elements can do. So we are done with the first one. We already know how to put content onto the page. Now this is the bigger and the more important one. So if you're getting into web design, and I'm going to discuss the concepts as well. Uh, as you venture into web development and design, you're going to... Uh, you're going to adopt your own style preference and that's fine. So in this video series, what you're going to see is my preference. Now, not to say that my preference is better than anybody else's, um, but we're also just going to learn <laughs> basically everything uh, to do with style sheets. So I've got this added. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to add it again. What you need to do in order to start using style sheets is within your head element, you need to add a new element called link. And this takes two attributes or two properties. The first one is um, rel, which means basically what uh, we're, we're going to link to something. What is that something's relation to this HTML file? So in this case, it's a style sheet. And then the second attribute of this element is going to be href. And this is the hypertext reference of this file. So as always, it can either be relative or absolute. I'm going to use a relative path in this instance, which is CSS slash style dot CSS. And if you guys don't have this created, just create a directory in your project root named CSS. And within that directory, create a style.css file. The .css extension is very important there. And this link element is self-closing. So let's go ahead and save this and jump into styling this. So if we look at our HTML file here, we can see that we've got uh, a body element, a header, main, a section, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we're going to be learning about how to um, how to style each of those things. But also, inheritance is a big thing. So, for instance, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But to just jump into styling in a very easy way, I'm going to make the body element gray the background of it. So I'm going to jump into the style sheet here. And now how you target elements, uh, if you're targeting by the element name, in which case this is body, that's what the tag's name is, you just write that name, so body. You put a space and you open up curly braces and then you can drop down. All the rules for this element is going to be between these curly braces. And there are a lot of rules that it can have. The first one we're going to talk about is colors. We're going to talk about both background color and text color. And those are the two main colors that you're going to be working with. Uh, and well, I mean, there's also border color and other stuff. And, and so they all follow the same rules, uh, which are there. You, you can use two types of colors. You can either use a hex color, uh, which is a, a color a representation written in hexadecimal, or you can use RGB or RGBA. And RGB is kind of like, uh, it has three numbers in it. The first number relates to red, the second one green, third one blue. And then RGBA also adds a fourth number in there, which refers to opacity. So you can either make it fully transparent or fully opaque. So let's, uh, th that was a bit to uh, absorb, so let's jump into it. Uh, how you write a property within a style sheet. Uh, so again, this is the element, and this defines what rules are going to be applied to this element. So let's go ahead and write background. And this is how you write a property name. So in this case, the background is a property. And actually, if you guys are using Atom, like I am, you're going to see a lot of these suggestions 
drop in. And these are all properties that you can use. For right now, we're just going to be using this one. So after you write a property name that you're going to define, you need to put a colon and then the value of it. So I'm going to start this off just by explaining hex colors first. So to begin a hex color, you need to put a hash symbol there. And now it's going to be either three digits or six digits. Right now we're going to work with six digits and then I'll explain how to make that shorthand and use three digits instead. So the background I'm going to make it right now is going to be black. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And you end a line in a, uh, in a definition of a property with a semicolon. So this is the syntax of a style sheet. And you can drop down here and write more, pro uh, more properties and rules to apply to this element if you'd like. Now, to explain the hex color here, what this is, if I highlight the center two uh, digits, you can, you can, we, we can look at them separately. So the first two digits relate to the color red, how much red is in it. Second two numbers relate to green, and then the last two uh, represent blue. So by setting these to zero, and then the middle two to zero, and then the last two to zero, we're saying there is no red, no green, and no blue. And if we save this and refresh the page, that's going to make it black. Now, in hexadecimal, you can, the, the, the values can go from zero all the way up to F. So, uh, you know, zero through nine, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. And F is, uh, the most, you know, that's the biggest number you can have. So if we set the first two digits to FF and save it and refresh, you're going to see it's red. And it's very hard on the eyes, so I apologize for that. Now, along the same lines, we're going to set these back to 0, 0, and we're going to set the center to, which represents green, to the most green that we can put into it. So this color code means there is no red, there is no blue, but there is every bit of green in this that there can be. So as you can see, again, very bright. Now, we can, we, we can manipulate these here, the center two, which right now it's saying there's as much green in it as possible. We can reduce that. So if I go backwards from F, let's go F, E, D, C. So let's try C. What you're going to notice is that it's going to get darker because there is nothing of anything else. There's just green. So by reducing the amount of green back to um, from white to black, you know, from full to none, we're going to get this uh, darkening shade of green as we go along. It's not noticeable there, but if I go with 5.5, five, which is quite a bit less, it's going to be very dark. I go with 1-1, one, one. it's going to be incredibly dark, and then 0-0 zero, zero would return it to black. And the same thing with blue, that would work the same way. So just remember, you're thinking about it in, uh, in I guess, three pairs of digits. And each pair can be 0-0 zero, zero, all the way up to FF, which means if you wanted to, you could make green... Um, and here's here's where it gets a bit complicated because we've been working with double digits all along like that. But let's say I wanted to put it somewhere between FF and EE. What we can do, so if I refresh that, that's very green. But if I make it FF, which is the most green, it's going to get a tiny bit more green. But let's say I wanted to do something between those. What I can say is, okay, well, let's start with the most F there can be, and then this one, let's set it to A. And this is where you can get that fine tuning uh, for colors. And this is why they need to be six digits. Now, alternatively, I can set that to A and this one to E. It's going to change it like that. So you have a full scale from 0, 0 to FF. So you can have 0, 0. You can have 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and it continues up. You can have 2, 4, you can have a 5 for each pair. 
So as you can imagine, there are a lot of colors and how you determine what a color is gonna be just by setting the hex value here is you look at each of these as their own individual number or letter, hexadecimal, I guess. Uh, and you're gonna start thinking in hex pretty soon. Now, in the previous examples, I used a system where the first two were the same, the second two were the same, and then the third pair was the same. And so in this instance, where each pair consists of the two of the same numbers, you can actually remove the second digit from each one to make it three digits. So this, I'm going to drop down to the next line and redeclare the background. And this is going to be the same color. So the first two digits and the second two and the third two are all uh, symmetrical, I guess. So you go 0, F, 0. And that's going to be the same color. Now, this wouldn't work if only the first two and the last two were mirror images per digit and the center one had two different ones, that wouldn't work. Each pair needs to only use uh, one number for both of the digits in order to be able to shorthand it. And if this doesn't make sense, we're gonna be working with it. I want you guys to play around with these hex codes. Um, now, I know that was probably a lot to absorb, but we're also gonna be learning about RGB and it's kind of the same system. So the first number you've got here represents red. So the only difference between hex and RGB is instead of having hexadecimals, um, so from zero to F, you've got numerics. You've got integers that represent the level of each color within this master color. And the numbers can go from zero all the way to 255. So 255 here, you can probably guess, this is going to be very, very red very red. And we can put this at 200, which makes it a kind of orange. And then we'll put this at 100, which just lighten that up a bit, I think. Now it's this nice peach color. So that's RGB. And we're going to jump into RGBA, which just adds one more parameter here. And that is opacity. So it goes from zero to one. So in this case, we're going to make it about half transparent. So we're going to put 0.5. Save it and refresh. And now you've got an even lighter shade because we've made it somewhat transparent. All right. So one last part in this video. We've learned about hex colors and RGBA. And I want you guys to play around with this seriously because this is big and it sounds complicated, but it is literally one of the simplest things you're going to be doing with CSS. So learn the colors. Um, the second property that we can set related to colors is color. And this, uh, this represents the text color. It's going to be the color um, of the text on the page. So if we want to make the text blue, uh, we're going to go zero. Uh, let's make it greenish blue. A, F. Then let's refresh and we got this nice blue color. And notice the inheritance here. So I've set this property on the body element, which means any element contained within the body element, the text of it, is going to be that color as well. So as you can see, the H1 element and the H3 elements are uh, affected as well as this copyright within the footer. So that's inheritance. You gotta be mindful of this because let's say you only wanna change the color for one of them or you wanna change the color for all of them except one. What we're gonna do here, let's say we want uh, this right here, the H3, I think that's an H3, yeah. We want the H3 to be black again. So what we'll do is we'll leave the CSS for the body as is. We're going to drop down and declare the next rule, which is going to be for H3 elements. And I'm going to say color. And we're going to put this back to black. And now you can see that um, it's, it's called the rule of specificity. Now, what happens, well, this is called inheritance. The rule of specificity is this. Uh, 
And if I wanted to define the color here as red, uh, I just saved this and I'm going to refresh it, but let's recap and I'm going to go over what might happen, but what is going to happen. So when this page refreshes, this line of text is first going to turn blue. And then the style sheet's going to read down to here, and it's going to say, oh, well, uh, that didn't specifically say H3, but this does, so this must be uh, more targeted for that element alone. So we're going to change the color there to uh, black. And then it gets down here, and what it's going to say, this basically means um, any H3 element contained within the body. This means any H3 element. Now, this is going to have a higher specificity because there are more rules to this target uh, is saying body and then h3. So if I refresh this, that h3 element actually becomes red because of specificity. And we're going to learn more about that in the next video.